Hello. My name is Ji Lee. Thank you very much for being here. The title of my show is Upside Down and Reverse. Everything that surrounds us is full of names and meanings. And these names and meanings come from somewhere. I believe most of the things we see, we, through, we see through the eyes of others and not our own. Because we are taught to see things the way they're supposed to be seen by everyone else instead of to be seen by our own eyes. They're taught by our parents, teachers, and later by our society. So we rarely get to see these things with our own eyes and our own feelings. Seeing things just the way they appear to us is a challenge and requires a lot of work. It requires having an open mind, unlearning what we were taught. It requires examining and questioning. It requires confronting the whole system and requires ultimately confronting ourselves. It also requires trusting ourselves, trusting our feelings and instincts without judging them because there's really no right or wrong way of seeing things. So it's, a, in a sense, complete anarchy. And this process is often very painful and comfortable. However, I believe there's a great reward at the end when we are finally able to see the things just the way they are. Because when we do that, we can truly understand the true meaning behind things. And the true meaning behind things is that there are no meanings behind them. So we can make our own meanings and our own interpretations of things. And this way we can make these things our own and no one else's. And when ha what happens when that happens, uh, we can experience a great sense of discovery and excitement, joy and freedom. And we get to be closer to understanding who we really are. So upside down and reverse is an anarchic punk rock way of seeing things. It's a denial of the matrix which we are all stuck. The matrix of control, conventions, conformity, and fake sense of comfort. So I always try to remind myself to look at things from a different perspective, my own perspective. And the work you're about to see is some examples of this attempt to make my own, seeing my own meaning behind things. The first uh, project is called Theater of Letters. And this project started when I was at Parson as a sophomore student of typography and design. And the assignment was called uh, Word as Image. And it was very simple. We, we were supposed to illustrate the meaning of the, each word only using typography, no illustration. So I'll show some of the examples. Some people have a uh, hard time understanding this, but all you have to do is uh, turn your mind 90 degrees counterclock. Scarface, holding the machine gun. The next project is Universe Revolved, which I also started when I was a junior at Parsons. And uh, this is a three-dimensional alphabet. And this is how 
the Universe Revolved created, was created. By the way, the name Universe Revolved come from the font Universe, which was created by the font designer Adrian Frutiger. So we take the conventional capital letters of our alphabet, in this case A, B, C, D, and we determine the farthest left point of each letter. At that point, we draw a vertical axis perpendicular to the baseline of each letter. And then we start, well, this is a, a slightly different angle of this letter, aerial view. And then we start uh, rotating the letters around this axis. So we form the complete 360 degree revolution. And then we have the entire alphabet from A to Z and the punctuations. Uh, and this is a different view of the alphabet. The interesting thing about this alphabet uh, is that uh, it really challenges the way we perceive reading and writing. Our alphabet, Latin alphabet, is composed of 26 letters. And some of these letters are symmetrical letters, like A or H, which means when you divide the letter in half, we have two equal parts. And some other letters are asymmetrical, 15 of them. What does that mean? That means that when we write a word like mat, which is composed all by symmetrical letters, and we flip this letter other way, we can read in both ways. We can read it as tam or mat. But when we have a word like Cape Town, and we flip it, because these words contain both asymmetrical and symmetrical letters, these letters appear flipped. So we can only read these words from right to left. This is Cape Town in Universe Revolved. And because Universe Revolved letters are all symmetrical, we can flip the letters and we can read the same words in both directions without the inconsistency of having the letters appear flipped. So we can read it Cape Town or Nuot Epoch. <laughs> and we can also stack the letter because they're three dimensional. We can make these letters as buildings or chocolate candies or set them in motion. And uh, there was a book which was published two years ago. And this entire book is written in three-dimensional alphabet. So when you remove the dust jacket, the whole book is written in 3D alphabet. And there are two covers, front cover and right cover. Or you can see as a front cover, I mean left cover and right cover, you can see as a front cover and back cover. And you can uh, start the book from either direction. So there are title pages and uh, content pages on both sides. So when you go to the end of the book, you're really arriving at the beginning of the book. So the book itself is in revolution. So these are some of the sample pages from the book. We start from a very elementary phrases. And I'm going to break the mystery here. I'm going to read what it says. But it, it really was designed to, for you to spend some time and discover the meaning behind these words. And it's really like re-experiencing uh, learning reading when we were a child, when we learned A for apple and B for B. And it's really a humbling experience, but at the same time, it gives a sense of discovery and excitement. Here it says, uh, I don't know if some, some of you have figured it out. Anybody? Reading is fun. Yeah, reading can be fun. Uh, this is a phrase by Pablo Picasso. Everything you can imagine is real. Kind of a circular reading. This is one of my favorite palindromes. Palindromes are those words you can read in both directions. This says, uh, I saw, I was I. Wake up. Humpty Dumpty <laughs> sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. Again, it's a stacking reading. Here, in this space station, everything is composed of words. So you can read everything here. So the ship that you see in the foreground are composed by the letters S-H-I-P. And all the buildings actually you can read as casino, hotel, bar, bank, 
ad agencies, and so on. And we have robots and police and taxis. Next project is NCN, Nine Circle Numbers. And this is also an attempt to look at some of the fundamental things like alphabet and numbers in a different way. Our numbers, Arabic numbers, are composed of 10 abstract symbols. They're abstract symbols because there are really no meaning attached to it. So one day we can decide that uh, these symbols are boring, we're fed up with them, so we can just simply change to these symbols and things would work fine. Nine circle numbers are based on visual logic and rather counting the elements and it changes our relationship to numbers to make it more colorful and more logical and having a sense of progression. So it's based on grid of nine circles and all you have to do is count the element within those circles. So it works well for 10 numbers or what happens when you go to number 10. So we have eight, nine, and 10. So whenever you add a zero, you're adding another layer of nine circles grid behind and you determine another color. 100, 100. anybody? <laughs> 427, that's right. And you have never seen this shape before, but you're still able to see what it is. Six, 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 the number of the beast. <laughs> and using these numbers, I created a, a calendar. This is 2005. And uh, on the top portion, we have 12 months of the year. At the bottom, we see the seven days of the week and, and the 31 days or 30 days of the month. This is February. March, and June, and you see the colors of the month are changing, and the colors correspond to the temperature of the season of the Northern Hemisphere. So during the summertime, it gets hot, and then we are October and December. WENS is another typeface I created. It's an acronym for West, East, North, South, and it was designed to be read in four different directions, unlike our conventional alphabet. So the principle is very simple. You take the square, point it to east, you turn it 90 degrees to south, 90 degrees to west, then 90 degrees to north. So you apply the same principle to this, oh, excuse me, to these letters, which all occupy the space of a square, and then you turn it, turn it, and turn it once again to form the entire typeface. And what well, people told me that they look like, uh, some of them look like uh, swastika. And I say they look like Hindu symbols. So, and swastika came from Hindu symbols, so screw Nazis. <laughs> uh, and this is uh, a haiku, a Japanese poem, uh, written by Wenz, an old pond, a frog jumps, sorry, an old pond, a frog jumps in, the sound of water. And you can see that they're in four different directions. This is uh, power. Power again, expanding. Life. Death, uh, the colors correspond to uh, five elements. Ego, God, which is basically the same thing. Uh, and some of my product designs, watchy, a watch design I did for Sachi and Sachi, they came and asked me to design a watch to uh, give to their clients and uh, shareholder as a gift. So I named it Watchy. And uh, 
It's for those who think ahead. So that's the design. <laughs> 3D chess. Thousands of years of chess playing and a number of designers came up with different versions of chess pieces. But rarely, a uh, chess board is uh, redesigned. And chess is such a territorial game that it really has to do with space. So I thought, why not design something more territorial and three-dimensional? <laughs> Dias scale. So it just doesn't tell you the weight, but it tells you what to eat, basically. So, so this is the starting point. So the very end, when you're really fat, you're supposed to drink beet juice. So that's uh, my wife uh, and her toes. And she's, she can eat lasagna, so she's pretty thin, I guess. As, uh, coming, talk, talking about my wife, uh, this is my wedding invitation, Clarina and G's wedding invitation. Clarina is a Swiss girl. And uh, when we got married, we realized there are six languages involved between the two families. Uh, Portuguese, English, Korean, German, French, and Romance, which is the fifth language of Switzerland. So it was a really cha real challenge to come up with the invitation. As a, and also, as a graphic designer, there's these huge expectations about coming up with something really smart and great. So such a pressure. Um, so our first instinct was, well, let's include all the six languages. But then we realized that we were underlining our cultural differences even further, and we wanted to unite our differences. So finally, what we came up with was uh, invitation in two parts. The first part was this. So I sent uh, her picture to my friends and family, and Clarina sent my picture to her friends and family. And when we sent these pictures, there were no return addresses. So people received this for the first time without knowing who these people were. And uh, <laughs> there were some weird reactions, I have to say, especially from the Swiss side. <laughs> I think they're a little uptight. So some people thought, when, when they saw my picture, they thought it was some um, ad for gay fashion store. <laughs> That's OK. I'm, I'm open. <laughs> and uh, another person thought it was a death threat from a Japanese cult. <laughs> That's a little scary. So a week later, we finally sent the uh, actual invitation for the relief of everyone. And uh, <laughs> on the back of the car, we designed the whole information with the international icons so everybody could understand. And even my grandma could understand. So I guess it was a success. These are some of my name cards. Uh, I carry several different cards and give to different people according to how I feel about them. This is one of my cards. It's the front of the card. And this is the back. <laughs> it's a, I think it's a very New York-centric card, because everybody in New York has some kind of agenda. This is another car uh, <laughs> that I designed for those I really didn't want to get in touch, but I never really actually used this, so I'm just sharing it with you. This is some of my advertising work. Uh, Talano was one of the big clients for Saatchi. And do you know Talano? Do you have Talano here? It's a pain relief medication. And we were supposed to come up with the brand advertising for Talano, so we didn't have to specifically talk about their product. And you know, I say we because I work with a copyright partner, a friend of mine. Uh, and you know, what gives people's headache is advertising. That's what gives people's headache. You know, all the legal copies and 
all the boring shouts and all the crap they put into advertising is what peop, you know, gives people's headaches. So why not, instead of promising the benefit through advertising, why not deliver the promise or the benefit on the spot in advertising? So this is some of the examples. So when you're looking at this in a traffic jam, for a few seconds, you feel a peace of mind and a relief. This could be for a print ad or billboard. And also we created uh, <laughs> red Rubik's Cube. Another client was T-Mobile. Uh, they wanted to launch their brands in international airports, targeting travelers. So we came up with this tagline, making the world an easier place to talk. It sounds like just like another tagline. Could be by AT&T or American Express. Also, we wanted to use medium as message in this case and make ads as public icebreakers. So it's really making the world an easier place to talk. How did we do that? So we set up a phone booth like this in different, the idea was to set up a phone booth like this in different airports, like Barcelona, Shanghai, Sydney, New York, and a mystery airport, could be J Joburg. Uh, so travelers who are stuck in the airport could simply take a phone and pick up Shanghai, and you ring a phone in Shanghai in the, in the airport, and two strangers could start talking and making the world an easier place to talk. This is an in-flight magazine insert. In the first side, it looks like a, any other boring ads by a telephone company. But when you look closer, the coupon says something else. Free 30 minutes conversation with the person sitting next to you. <laughs> or free 20 minutes conversation about the in-flight movie with anyone on board. So you can really use this as an icebreaker. We also presented the idea of painting some chairs with T-Mobile pink color so that two strangers could start talking. Abstractor uh, is a device, very easy device, which anybody can make. And it instantly transforms your TV viewing into a pleasant and smooth, a soothing experience. So I'll teach you how to make Abstractor. And you can go home and make them if you like. It's very easy. So first step is to, uh, you have to gather the TV, obviously, blackboard, straight edge, tape measure, cutting knife, and tape. You measure your television. And then you cut the board to the size that you can just cover the television in two parts. And then you tape them. And at the end, you leave a very small gap in between. So at the end, you can turn on the TV and mute the volume and play a soothing piece of music of your choice, dim the light for a better effect, and sit back and enjoy on the abstractor. <laughs> so we're going to show a, a, a small clip of uh, uh, an MTV. I just recorded some MTV. It could be CNN or any other sports channel, if you like. Uh, and this is how abstractor could work. <laughs> so you can enjoy that at home.
the bubble project, um, I started this project when I was working at Sashi. I was getting increasingly frustrated about the process of working in an advertising agency. Uh, I learned a lot about things, a lot of different things while working there. It was great experience in many respects, but the frustrating aspect was producing work. I thought I came up with really interesting ideas that would really work great for the clients and for the public, but at the end, because of the conservative nature and because of a politically correct uh, philosophy in the corporate American world, a lot of ideas were tested and at the end you were, they were uh, killed or watered down. So I was very frustrated and I wanted to express myself and I was very also angry at looking at so much ad on the street and they were so, most of them were so boring and they're so intrusive and offensive to my intelligence. So I thought, well, I want to come up with something and, and transform this ad quickly. So what I did, uh, I printed uh, 30,000 of these stickers, uh, and I went around placing them on top of ads in New York, <laughs> <clears throat> such as this ad, uh, the perfect tan, anyway you sp spray it. So you can think about other different things you can write on it. Uh, you can say, also a perfect uh, vibrator. Uh, <laughs> And uh, iPods was target, uh, pull my ad. This is ad for School of Visual Arts. And sometimes really interesting things happen like this. This was a movie, uh, a poster for King Kong, and the other one was some poster for a dragon book that happened to be next to each other, so begging to talk to each other. So these bubbles really give voices to these strange animals and they can finally meet each other. And these are some of the results. And many times they really speak the truth, like this one, and this one. I'm going to read this one. I'm concerned that my CD will not sell more than 200,000 units, and that as a result, my recoupable advance from my label will be taken from me, after which my contract will be canceled, and I'll be back singing journey covers on Bleecker Street. Love, Glenn Lewis. <laughs> and he's not there anymore. I mean, I haven't seen him around on TV or anything. And even Dalai Lama has something to say. I don't really understand. It's too profound to me, I think. <laughs> and uh, the book will be launched in June um, with uh, three different covers, and uh, there are going to be stickers inside, so you can use the stickers to bubble your own town. It's a great gift for your parents and friends, and <laughs> it's only $15. And recently, I launched the online version of the Bubble Project. Um, it's the, the Bubble Person of the Week. So uh, each week, I'll choose a person who made the news. Uh, the first Bubble Person of the Week is the one and only our George W. Bush giving uh, his uh, State of Union speech. And, uh, and the site got hundreds of different uh, responses, and one of them is The next week was Bono. He won uh, four Grammys for his uh, How to mental, Dismantle an Atomic Bomb. One of the responses was... <laughs> and lastly, uh, our one and only Dick Cheney with his 
unfortunate incident. And uh, one of the responses was, Thank you very much.